Hi, thank you so much for joining me today. And today is day 15, so we're halfway through of Scrap September 2023. This is a month long hop organised by the Scrappy Sisters and Laura Alberts, and I'm thoroughly enjoying myself. So today's prompt is to use mixed media, and I've decided to use a stencil, some stamps, and some splatters. I'm using my Vicky Butin Where To Next, and I'm documenting some photos of myself and my husband on Liberty Island in New York back in 1999. Um, quite a poignant photo set because you can see the Twin Towers behind us. Um, I'm just pulling out some scraps of paper. I've also got one full size paper that from the paper pad, the black and white one with all the different icons on. And I'm trying to work out how to create a vertical strip. I wanted to create a vertical strip with blocks so I'm just going through the papers and I've pulled out the blues and black and whites and some of the lime green which goes really nicely with Ross's coat. So you can see I've really faffed and struggled a lot with this one. I don't know whether I put pressure on myself because these are precious photos. We don't have the negatives anymore and they were taken on a point and shoot so um, not digital they were pre our digital era so I uh, don't have any more than these singular photos. <laughs> I think possibly when you're scrapping with digital and you know that you can print them again, you don't have that pressure. But when uh, they're the only copies you've got, you put you can tend to put the pressure on yourself somewhat, can't you? But I just think these photos weren't in an album. They were just stuffed in a box. And if I don't do something with them, they will remain in the box and they're much more likely to be looked at if they're in an album. So I'm trying desperately to scrap some of our older photos in amongst the newer photos that we're taking. So you can see there, that's the striped paper, which I love. And I just cut the green and black and white stripes from that to add as a layer. And I've got lots of different layers going on there. And I'm going to take each piece and um, distress the edges with my Tim Holtz edge distressor, which I've just done. So now I'm putting these pieces back into place can't remember where they went of course <laughs> so just having a faff keep bringing the photos back in to check that I'm happy with the positioning this green piece wasn't big enough for me so I'm actually going to rip that in half and have half at the top above the photos and half at the bottom at the bottom of the photos so just um, playing about and trying to decide exactly where I want to put it I want to have this vertical strip away from the um, edge the left hand edge of the paper so that I can tuck in some embellishments around that left hand side. The stencil that I'm going to be using is a Simple Stories, I think the collection was called Let's Go from a couple of years ago. It was a travel collection and they had a stencil which was like a street map and it really does look like New York, like Manhattan. So I thought I wanted to use that today. So here I am, I finally worked out exactly where I want to put those papers. So I'm just using my Nouveau Deluxe adhesive glue to get those all stuck down. Just peeling the papers back like you've seen me doing before if you've watched my previous videos, just so that I don't lose where I had them <laughs> because that happens very frequently. And my memory is awful. I think I hit my 50s and that was it. <laughs> I just can't remember where anything is anymore. So just bringing those photos back in, as I say, just to check that I'm happy with the positioning as I go along, particularly now I'm sticking everything down. And I'm trying to stick this down as one huge photo mat so that I can move it out of the way to add my stenciling when I come to that bit. So just holding things down to let the wet glue stick together. And then, um, like I say, keep bringing those photos back in just to check. Then I bring in a few more pieces of paper this spotty one which I add to the bottom right hand corner there. So I'm going to distress the edges of that and there we go as if by magic <laughs> and so I'll glue that piece down and we're very nearly there now with this mat. So just clearing off that dust from the paper, bringing the photos in again. I can't remember exactly when I glue these down, it may be now and then I see this uh, black and white floral, so I bring that in as well. And that's just another layer to the bottom right hand corner there. Each time I move the photos around, I want the one of us at the top, but every time I bring them back, I seem to end up at the top. So <laughs> here we go, so I'm gluing those down. I decided against putting white um, mat around the edge of them this time. They're quite dark photos. I suppose they are 25 years old now. So I'm um, just leaving them as they are. So there's that stencil I was talking about. And I'm just going to come in with my speckled egg 
ink from Tim Holtz, the Distress Oxide, and just push that through the stencil. And I will move the stencil up and down a little bit to um, extend the line because it's only a six by eight and I want it to go towards the top and towards the bottom of the page. So here you can see, I'm just roughly, you, obviously you can't match it up, it's not a continuing stencil, but roughly matching up the boxes at the bottom where I'm going to start stenciling again, just so that um, it looks continuous, even though I know it's not. So darkening that edge there, there was one very dark spot that I just wanted to blend in a little bit. And now going through the papyri paper pieces, I see this circular piece straight away and I do love, if you've watched me before, you'll know I do love circles. So adding that to the top left and in the end I do end up cutting that in half and using half at the top left and the other half at the bottom. That ticket says subway one trip and I thought that was perfect because we did actually get the subway down to Battery Park when we went down to see the Statue of Liberty. It was a freezing cold day and I do put about that in the um, journaling, how very cold it was when we went down. So just going through, seeing what else I can find. I love this huge ticket piece and I think that'll layer nicely under those blue bits and break it up a little bit. So I'm going to add that there. And this is where I decide that I want to cut that circular piece in half. It just seems such a waste adding so much of it under that corner. I have got these papyri paper packs have so much in them and they have duplicates of everything, but um, I don't want to waste. <laughs> so. This is the sort of thing that I would use time and time again on layouts. And I love how that tucks in the bottom right hand corner. You wouldn't know that it was only a half piece. And again, with this huge tag, I've ripped the bottom half off because I know I can use that as a layering piece in the future. Um, it was pointless having it sitting underneath those photos. So just gluing all these bits down now. I haven't yet stuck that huge map down, but I just want to get everything else situated and check that I'm happy with the way things are going. In a minute though I will be forced to because I bring something in that's just too heavy to keep moving around on top of those very thin paper pieces. So. And this is it, it's this chipboard frame. Um, again it's that lovely lime green that, J that Ross has got in his coat. See I nearly called him James, that's my son. <laughs> I'm getting to that age. Oh gosh my granny always used to do that. So just adding that chipboard frame, it was just a half, I'd used the other half on a previous layout but you can see how heavy it is on that very thin paper, so I decide just to get everything glued down before I cause any damage moving things around. And then once that's down, it's going to be easier to add some more chipboard pieces around the place and keep going with my embellishing. So this strip says, life is a story, make yours a bestseller. And I just like that, and it brings that black into the right-hand side of the page, so that works very nicely there, and kind of combines those two photos into one as well. And then this chipboard arrow I just think is fun and it's bringing that black up to the top so I add that there. And then I continue to go through the chipboard pieces and I find a green star which um, after moving it around the page a bit settles at the top just there. So adding that again with my wet glue. And then this lovely notebook piece, um, I've tried to use it previously and it didn't really work but it just adds another layer and texture here so just running a bead of that wet glue along the edge of the blue piece and look at how perfectly this fits it's like it was made for that strip and these are all just scraps that I've got left over from previous layouts really they weren't measured um, but sometimes things just work don't they so that sticker says off to explore and then this one says collecting moments and now I'm coming in with my Ellie Studio Large Jane Alphabet Stamps. I have used these recently on a previous layout of a concert that my daughter and I went to. And they're just brilliant for adding a real impactful um, title on the layout. So I was thinking about putting New York City and I'm just spelling it out here and it fits perfectly into that gap. But then it had me wondering where I was going to put my journaling. So in the end, I just settled for New York. So first of all, doing new, and you saw I just laid the stamps down and then used my stamp block to pick them up. And now I'm going to stamp it onto the layout. And you do get almost like a weathered look with this. I never get a perfect stamp. I don't know whether I need a new archival ink, whether that's running out of juice or what, but I really do like the look that you get. So now I'm just going to spell out York. And these are lovely words because it's one of each letter. <laughs> you haven't got duplicates, so I'm not having to... Restamp after. 
and like ease. <laughs> so as I say, this the um, prompt today was mixed media. So I've done my stenciling and now I'm coming in with some stamping. So just getting those nice and straight how I want them and then picking them up on my stamp block again. And there we go. Really happy with that title. So now I'm going to add my journaling underneath that. And the journaling just reads, Amazing views of Manhattan behind us whilst on Liberty Island. It was so cold, our camera stopped working. We thought it was broken, so bought a new one on the way back to our hotel. Turns out it was just too cold. <laughs> and it's stories like that over the years you slowly forget or don't tell the kids. And when they look at the album, I hope that they will. They'll um, read that and see what we experienced. So just adding some wax twine through those two little tags that I put to the right hand side there and then a few dots of glue just to keep it in place. I want to keep it running fairly freely but also keep it where I want it to go. <laughs> that makes no sense at all but I hope you know what I mean. I don't want it to be stuck flat to the layout is what I'm trying to say. So just having a look to see what else I can add and coming back to the sticker book I wanted to bring a bit more of this red into that left hand side so this little arrow worked perfectly just adding a foam pad behind just to keep it the same height as the photos because I've got so many layers there I need a little bit more height then I've got this black arrow again from the sticker book that I added below a little red geotag that I added at the bottom so then I brought in one of James's JD 3D wood um, geotags and one of our little acrylic pieces. It's not acrylic, resin, resin dots. So finally, I'm going to come in with some splatters and bringing in my uh, Lindy's Magical. Uh, these are powdered mica that you just add water to and then you can splatter them with a paintbrush. And this is a industrial steel, I think maybe. It's like a very deep gray, almost a black with a beautiful sheen to it. And that's it. So please do check the description box down below for everybody else who's joining in on this fabulous hop. I've loved seeing everybody else's creations. There's also a hashtag, hashtag September, Scrap September 2023. Um, if you go onto Instagram and follow that, you'll see lots more inspiration. Other than that, I shall see you tomorrow. Thanks so much. Bye.